Hello, I'm Flick and I'm taking you inside Picture House. This month, we come to you from the Phoenix Picture House in Oxford. The cinema opened on the 15th of March, 1913, as the North Oxford Kinema, and is one of only a handful of British cinemas that can lay claim to having been continuously open for 100 years. Located on Walton Street in the parish of St Giles, in the Jericho area of Oxford, the Phoenix Picture House stands on ground belonging to St John's College, which remains its landlord to the present day. A predominantly art house cinema, in 1989 it became the perfect first venue in the Picture House Cinemas group. The strength of Phoenix is very much that it is a community cinema. We've been here for obviously a very long time and we've got a lot of regulars who've been coming to us in some cases for 60 or more years. We do very, very well with art house, foreign language and lots of things that you generally won't find in other cinemas. So in 2017 a decision was made that we should have a refurbishment of the cinema. We've incorporated stadium seating, proper soundproofing, new projection and just generally made everything the best that it can be. So plans for the future are to continue what we're doing. We're very good at what we do and we want to play to our strengths as much as possible. So a large part of that is to incorporate a lot more one-off events. We've had both Sheila Hancock and Sam Mendes in for post-film Q&As, which both did very well, very well attended and very well reviewed. So more of that, really. The Happy Prince is Rupert Everett's directorial debut about the tragic latter years of disgraced playwright Oscar Wilde. Your appreciation has been most intelligent. Which persuades me that you think almost as highly of the play as I do myself. Everett first starred in Wilde's An Ideal Husband in 1999 and has several Wildean acting credits plus a lifetime of activism to bring him to this career-defining work, 15 years in the making. Though based in the impoverished Parisian years that led to his death, the film portrays his heartbreaking fall from grace, time in Reading Jail and the relationships which shaped him, all via his enchanting telling of the happy prince at first to his sons and then to two Parisian orphans. Why should a perfectly divine leopard change his spots? asked Wilde. Why, sadly, indeed. No mystery so great as suffering. But suffering is nothing when there is love. Love is everything. I'm in mortal combat with this wallpaper, Robbie. One of us has to go. Hereditary is the directorial feature debut of one Ari Aster, of whom you will undoubtedly hear more. Come on, Peter. Let's just sue him. The film has received universal acclaim from horror genre fans and non-fans alike, and currently has a literally unheard of 100% on review site Rotten Tomatoes. Astor's small, short film oeuvre is simply outstanding in its unique, unsettling storytelling and standout acting, both of which are completely compelling, astonishing and most refreshingly challenging. Tony Collette and Gabriel Byrne are the stars of Hereditary, with Collette being tipped for Oscardom for her portrayal of Annie, an artist who carves doll's house miniatures, whose family becomes engulfed in a terrifying and supernatural breakdown triggered by the loss of her mother. I just don't want to put any more stress on my family. McQueen is brought to us by writer Peter Tedgey, Listen to Me Marlon, and producer Ian Bonnot, and is a labour of love documenting the life and death of fashion legend Lee Alexander McQueen. I was always drawing clothes in science, in biology. He has got nothing, and yet he was determined this is what he was going to do. It is as gothic, dark, unexpected and beautifully crafted as one would hope, with a lavish and dramatic score by Michael Nyman. 
McQueen was a rank outsider in fashion terms, a working class misfit from Lewisham, yet ended up as head designer at Givenchy at the age of 26. As is so often sadly the case, the gift of true genius is equal blessing and curse. With success came a slavish workload, constant press scrutiny and untenable stress. This is what I was born to do. The fragility of life. We can all be discarded quite easily. You're there, you're gone. <laughs> Ocean's 8 is the all-female crime caper spin-off from Steven Soderbergh's very successful all-male Ocean's franchise and is directed by Gary Ross, Hunger Games. Fuck you. $16.5 million in each of your bank accounts five weeks from now. That's a lot. Sandra Bullock stars as Danny Ocean's sister, Debbie, recently released from jail where she cogitated the heist of the century. The film also stars Rihanna as tech wizard 8-Ball and Kate Blanchett as Debbie's BFF and partner in crime, Lou. Helena Bonham Carter, Anne Hathaway and a host of cameos make the film a positive riot of who's who and wearing what. Have Fun. We will not be the prime suspects. Wait, 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 wait. Every time you, have you move it, they have to start from scratch. What did you, what you do? do? I turn it on. Oh. Oh. Screen Arts. The Glindbourne summer season begins in June with Annalise Miskimon's gorgeous 1950s set production of Madame Butterfly. An innocent geisha girl abandons everything when she marries a dashing American naval officer. Love, however, turns to betrayal, leading to one final agonising sacrifice. For me, Madame Butterfly's music, Puccini, it's gloriously lush. You can just dive into it and he sweeps you up um, and takes you to these wonderful places. And now the news. Can 2018 was seen as a shake-up year with Kate Blanchett presiding over a female-dominated jury. The Palm d'Or winner was Hirokazu Koreeda for Shoplifters, and Spike Lee won the Grand Jury Prize for Black Klansman. However, the proudest moment was the standing ovation given to Rafiki, the first ever Kenyan feature to appear at the festival. Directed by Wanari Kaiyu, the film has been banned in her own country due to its lesbian storyline. Summertime means picture house pop-ups, outdoor screenings at stately homes, local parks, museums, pubs, castles and gardens. When darkness falls, the screens light up. Tickets are now on sale for July's live satellite broadcast of Everybody's Talking About Jamie, from the Apollo Theatre in London's Shaftesbury Avenue to cinemas nationwide. Inspired by a true story, this is the new award-winning five-star hit musical for today. Jamie overcomes prejudice, beats the bullies and steps out of the darkness into the spotlight. And what would summer be without the big stomping blockbuster? This year, what could possibly be bigger than Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom? Chris Pratt returns with Jeff Goldblum to this time rescue them mighty critters. Want to watch something brilliant and completely different? Discover Tuesdays could be for you. Discover Tuesdays is a weekly showcase of some of the very best in art house, independent, foreign language and documentary cinema. It's a mix of brand new releases, classics and previews of upcoming films. We created Discover Tuesdays in 2012 to give our audience the chance to find films that they might not otherwise get to see. We look to play an eclectic mix of styles and genres there's such a range of amazing and underrated cinema out there and we would like to showcase the very best of it in Pitch House Cinemas. That's it for June. Remember to keep up to date at our website, picturehouses.com. And of course, you can book tickets on the go with our handy Picture House app. Become a member of Picture House Cinemas to get free tickets, discounts and loads of perks and benefits. 
If you have been with us for more than a year, then our premium membership gives you even bigger exclusive benefits. Thank you for watching and I will see you again in July.